Hi, this is going to be my end of uh, 2021 review of Battlefield 2042. Uh, I've been playing it since uh, early launch and this is uh, my opinion so far. So ever since uh, 2002 when uh, Battlefield 1942 came out, I've been a huge fan of the Battlefield series. I played all of the games uh, and I've liked uh, or even loved most of them except uh, maybe Battlefield 5. It uh, just did not work for me. So I just hit uh, level 50, that's like uh, mid in the game or something. And uh, so I do feel like I can say what I think about the game. Uh, I do think I've uh, experienced most of the game. Uh, I'm gonna say it straight up, I have not played Hazard Zone. It looks boring and it has not interested me at all. It also looks completely dead on arrival. Uh, there's no gameplay videos to be found lately. And nobody plays it anymore. So this is my review of the multiplayer and portal mode. I'm trying not to make a uh, too negative video. But it's uh, hard not to uh, mention all the parts that are missing or uh, unfinished uh, in this game. Uh, I'm gonna say right up, I do really like the game. I think it's fun. Uh, I like the gunplay uh, and I like the action. Even though there are lots of things that are uh, not great or finished. So I'm gonna mention the things that are uh, lacking or missing. Uh, so it kind of sound quite negative for a while, but uh, it, it has to be said, and uh, I do, I do actually recommend uh, the Battlefield game, uh, especially for all the Battlefield fans. Uh, and it uh, should be on a sale somewhere, so you don't have to pay full price at least. So Battlefield 2042 has had a very bad launch, uh, unlike Battlefield 4 that was extremely buggy. This game has uh, been working since day one, but uh, really lacking on content. And um, it shows in the player count. If you see the list on Steam, you can see there has been a very sharp decline in players. It actually that's lost to a game called Farming Simulator when, the, when it came out. I also do think most players play Battlefield games or even uh, on Origin launcher or on the EA launcher. I always use those. I don't think most players play via Steam. I might be wrong. But it's a bad indicator for the Battlefield franchise, because you can see on Steam there are lots, lots of people dropping out. So there was a little upswing in the player count because of a free weekend. But all in all, you can see in the Steam chart that the game has been losing players every day. There is no doubt in my mind that the game came out way too early, maybe even six months too early. Also, uh, Lack of uh, leadership uh, can be can be the reason why this game has been so strange. Uh, it feels like it should be another game. There are already several articles online about uh, what has happened behind the scenes, uh, dice, in EA, showing uh, a lack of leadership, a lack of planning, a lack of vision. Uh, and that might be the reason, or probably is the reason, why Battlefield 2042 is uh, so unfinished. I personally think Battlefield 2042 started out as a battle royale. Uh, that makes kind of sense uh, for a lack of uh, some features and why they have things like specialists. And I'll talk more about those later. So I said I'm not going to mention all the things that are lacking in this game because the list is uh, quite extensive. Personally, I don't think everything from older games sh 
must be in a new game. Uh, but uh, here are some very obvious things. Uh, a lot of people did miss the single player or a campaign mode. I don't miss that, so I don't care about that. Server browser, that's kind of obvious. Uh, persistent lobbies, but it's not there. There are way too few uh, multiplayer game modes. They are adding more, but they're too few. The class system, the uh, in-game assignments, the stats page, the custom emblem, spectator mode, uh, permanent community servers, global leaderboards, uh, chat screen, yeah, and then maybe a weapons test screen. Uh, the list goes on. I'm gonna talk about some of those things uh, in my video. So this is the list of the things that I don't like, that I hope they either fix or uh, just remove or maybe add some things. I'm gonna start off with the maps. The maps in the new 2042 base game are huge. They are really, really big. And that is because they wanted to have 128 players. And that is the first mistake DICE made. I know it sounds cool on paper, but uh, Battlefield runs much better on the 64 player servers. So technically, they should just stick to the 64 servers. And uh, some weeks later now, they have made some uh, 64 player servers and you can play them. It's much more stable, the frame rate is more stable. So it's obviously it does not work that well on 128 players. There are of course cool moments when you have that many players on screen, especially on the breakthrough mode. Uh, you got a lot of action, but also to, <laughs> there's so many action, so much action. You don't really know where your, uh, your enemies are. They are like 360 degrees, so you're getting killed in any direction every time. But, like I said, the maps are too big and there are very large spaces between the hotspots. So a large map feels like maybe like four smaller maps and you have to like either run or uh, drive a vehicle between the places. So that's one of the first mistakes, making the maps way too big and way too boring. On those big maps, they started with placing the capture points on all <laughs> kind of wrong locations. Uh, there were some uh, really bad ones in the beginning uh, on the top of some skyscrapers. They have removed them now, so you can actually play some of the maps. Uh, but that also shows a lack of testing, because if somebody just tested this game before they launched it, they would figure out that the spawn locations uh, on some of the flags were god awful. They also decided to add things like from Battlefield uh, 4, like the Levolution. The big epic uh, thing that would happen uh, every now and then. And on Battlefield 2042 it's uh, usually a big tornado or a sandstorm on the map. The tornado is mostly just annoying. It's fun maybe the first two times you see it, after that you just stay away from it. Uh, it does not bring anything fun to the map or to the game. It's just an annoyance. I personally think this is yet another marketing thing. Somebody at marketing said, well, what would be cool? Yeah, big huge tornado that would crash everything. But again, the problem is that the maps are so big and there are so little things that can be destroyed on the maps. They really tune down the amount of things that can be destroyed in Battlefield 2042. So when their tornado wrecks havoc, it uh, really doesn't show that uh, well. So that's quite disappointing. And I'm also disappointed with uh, just the general lack of things to destroy in Battlefield 2042. Uh, it's nothing close to Bad Company 2, but it's not even close to like Battlefield 4 in my opinion. There are things you can obviously destroy, but not that much as uh, I've been used to. 
just graphically the game is also okay uh, it looks uh, nice at the uh, certain points i do believe that battlefield 5 actually looks better even if it's an older game uh, some of the reasons is because the game has so many large areas with nothing on them they are just so dead and this is gonna be this is supposed to be set in a time like uh, after like a big global event or something but the maps are looking quite shiny and clean so not nothing that makes you think there's been like a world war 3 or anything like that so sometimes things do look really nice like big explosions lots of players on screen things like that and other times it looks look looks like it's a, a beta game or a pre-alpha game or something because uh, lacking textures and uh, quite bland another thing is the audio battlefield has always been known for its great audio uh, but this is might be the most bland boring audio ever one thing is that the audio is uh, quite unimpressive this time the other thing is the, the wrong audio you, you can hear footsteps sometimes you don't hear it sometimes you do hear it things like that weapons sounds okay but nothing like in uh, older battlefield games so i do hope they do a rework on the audio with time it's not their first priority but they should look uh, into it especially the uh, directional audio they have to do that uh, uh, quite soon in my opinion and then we have all the vehicles uh, they are uh, quite unbalanced they have been fixed uh, since launch because uh, the biggest issue since launch was the hovercraft and I, I'm sure you can uh, have seen a lot of videos uh, where you can see the hovercraft scaling a skyscraper or uh, just being a total tank they did nerf that at least, but uh, the next problem now is the bolt, which is supposed to be a, a personnel carrier, but uh, it's more of a roadkill machine. So the vehicles have to be nerfed some more. Uh, that's one of the things. So I really don't have uh, that many issues with the vehicles. Just uh, fix. Uh, the bolt and uh, the game should uh, be a little more fun for most people next up is the weapons uh, they had really a bad launch with the weapons especially especially the um, assault rifles they were basically useless because of all the recoil and everybody was running with the submachine gun, the PP-29 and uh, headshotting people from a uh, distance they have uh, fixed um, most of the guns uh, so you can use uh, anything from the SMG to the assault rifles now you can see a larger variation of what guns uh, are being used now the, since the launch that's a good thing uh, unfortunately there are very few guns in this uh, game uh, we are used to having much more ga guns in battlefield games so i really do hope they will add more very soon uh, so there are more things to unlock so they should add more guns down the line i don't uh, think it should be the most important thing to add first i would rather have more maps uh, before that or of course a game that works uh, more stable uh, some of the good parts about uh, the uh, guns are the new uh, menu in game and you have to change up the attachments all you have to do is hit the t button on the keyboard and you can change uh, the scope and attachments and ammo just on the fly kind of like uh, the crisis game that is one of the new features that I really do like. Uh, I don't use it that often, but uh, it's, a, it's a nice thing to have. Uh, the other problem is the keyboard registration. Very often the game does not record 
uh, my keystrokes. Uh, and I do think that is uh, something that they have to be fixed. They did fix the hit ridge. That was really awful in the beginning. Uh, but they should also do much more work on that part. I do think that the loadout screen for all the weapons are uh, a little bit too complicated. It also does not show the uh, correct stats. So you can use, for example, a suppressor and it says you're uh, not showing on the map, uh, but in reality you are showing on the map. There are uh, several stats in the game that uh, shows up wrong, so that's something they should fix uh, quite soon. Most importantly, I really do like the gunplay. Uh, that's maybe the most important thing for a first-person shooter, in my opinion. So, the game has been out for like six weeks or something, and the gunplay is already much better now. And I do think it's uh, maybe one of the better things in the entire Battlefield 2042 game. And then you have the thing that... Uh, is most controversial the thing that uh, most players uh, either hate or dislike and that is the specialists most people really really dislike the specialists I didn't like them in the beginning they are slowly growing on me uh, but I would rather see the classic uh, class system instead of the specialists this is yet another Proof of uh, the game wanting to be something uh, which is not a battle royale or something like that. But there are ways to fix the specialists to make them more useful and make them more fit in a battlefield game. Because the problem is that everybody can run with the same loadout. Everybody could have a rocket launcher, everybody could be an engineer, everybody can do anything. And that, when you do that, you kind of destroy the whole class system. One of the things that the battlefield has always been known for. And that also removes some of the team play. When everybody can be anything. Sounds maybe fun on the paper or something like that. The specialists also have their own unique uh, specialities. Uh, like Sundance has this uh, flight suit that is awesome. Uh, Boris has a, a turret that uh, auto shoots uh, enemies. Uh, and there are like eight uh, specialists at the moment. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna focus on adding more of those. And most likely, this is the, their way to sell more microtransactions to the people. I hope I'm wrong, but uh, this is uh, EA and they are greedy. Uh, I do believe there is an easy way to make the specialists more uh, useful and that is if they uh, could set them in uh, the four different groups like Sniper, Recon, uh, Assault, uh, engineer and so on so that uh, all the maybe let's say Falk and Angel they could be uh, the medics and the Boris could be a mechanic and so on I do think that would be a better solution for DICE and also would bring up much more team play for uh, the Battlefield game one of the absolute worst thing about the specialist are the end of round super cringe voice lines they do. It is so out of uh, character, out of game. Uh, does not feel like a battlefield game at all. And I really hate it. I do not think there is a person that likes those end of round uh, things. And then over to something uh, more positive, and that is the portal mode. I did not like the portal mode that much in the beginning because uh, you didn't get the regular XP 
Uh, I'm not going to go into detail what the portal mode is. I think most people know that by now. Um, but the smart thing DICE did is to add uh, classic maps, uh, cl classic modes like uh, Rush and uh, now Team Deathmatch uh, in the portal mode. And you get the regular XP and uh, everything uh, goes over to the base game. Uh, so right now it feels like we have twice as many maps and the game runs much more smooth on Team Deathmatch and Rush, things like that. Still not perfect, there's still some issues with the spawn locations and things like that. But I do really think that the game feels much more alive with those modes. And it's very important that the DICE keeps these modes up forever. I know they are saying it's just a limited time and that's uh, some stupid uh, thing. Uh, they should have it uh, permanent. Portal mode has the uh, potential to really be the savior of Battlefield 2042. Uh, I do like it with the modern guns and the old classical maps. Uh, there are six maps in total, if I remember correctly. Uh, and um, they are quite fun and I uh, really do recommend everybody to check out those uh, official new modes now. I just hope that uh, Dyson EA does not uh, destroy this by making everything uh, on a time basis because this is this is not Fortnite this is not a battle royale uh, I hope they understand that and uh, listens to the community so I'm kind of excited to see what the uh, portal can be in 2022 so that's my opinion about Portal so far. I really do like it and I do see the potential. So to close uh, up this uh, end of year review, I also want to say that uh, there is not going to come any new content before March next year. And that's like three months. And that might kill the game if they do that. I really do hope they come up with some uh, content before that. They're on a, a Christmas break right now. So I'm excited to see how fast they keep on patching the game. They, this is uh, the first time DICE has patched the game this much in, uh, in this short amount of time. So I just hope they keep doing that. And uh, we might end up having a good Battlefield game at the end. I also hope they don't start with the microtransactions too soon now. That will put off too many players. We saw the Santa skin uh, nonsense, things like that. We don't need crap like that. Uh, and if they add it, it should, f should not cost any money. It should be free. Uh, the game does not have any single player, that does not bother me at all. But they also lack a story in the game. I know they are like trying to pull off a uh, World War 3-ish feeling, but uh, somehow uh, I don't think most people kind of feel that. Uh, all we have is uh, like a very cringy intro to any game uh, map where they talk, uh, but it makes no sense, uh, nobody cares about that. Uh, and also, when you start the game, the first thing you see is a freaking ship, a boat. Where are the naval maps? I really do hope that is uh, one of the things that are coming in future expansions, uh, because like I said, the first thing you see is a ship. So, yeah, this is uh, my first review video and uh, my opinion uh, about Battlefield 2042 so far. I hope uh, for those who have listened to the end, they do hit the like button and uh, please subscribe and uh, leave a comment. Goodbye and have a happy new year.